Hi, I'm Dr. Leslie. Welcome back to my kitchen. Today, we're going to do banana cake. This is local style banana cake, which means that it is light, it's crumbly. Now, banana cake, right? Not very easy to get a really good one because uh, out there, uh, especially the confectionaries, they use a lot of uh, essence to uh, make the cake. This cake has taken me almost half a year of research to do. So I even go to the extent of increasing the flour 10 grams at a time, taking away the flour 10 grams at a time. So every time I change one variable only in order to see what's the difference it makes to the cake. Finally, right, I uh, managed to bake this cake which it's not quite perfect yet, but it's the best that I can do so far. So I'm going to share it with you, and if you can improve it, please write back to me and tell me what you've done. Locally, we have two different kinds of bananas that are usually used for uh, banana cake, and I've experimented with a few actually. One is this called Pisang Raja, usually to make goreng pisang. This one is not so easily available. You can't find it in the supermarket, but you can find it in some fruit shops. The meat is very nice, very custardy and sweet. The one that you can easily find in most fruit shops is this Pisang Barangan. It's a little bit more acidic, not as sweet and rich as the Pisang Raja. Once you have all these dark spots appearing on the banana and it's really nice and soft, almost to the point of going bad. That's the best ripeness that you can get. I've been cooking a lot with the barangan because it's uh, easily available. Sometimes pisang raja, you can't get from every food shop. So this is the way to tell the difference. With the raja, you want to look at the tip. There's a nice sharp tip there, whereas the barangan is nice and round. And then when you feel the surface, the raja feels very rough and almost like furry uh, peach. This is very smooth. So that's how you tell the difference between the two. Usually you will need to uh, take about three of these but uh, I prefer to weigh the banana so that I get an exact measurement. If there's too much banana, the cake will become more like a kueh. If it's not enough banana, you don't get the flavour. That's where the trick lies. you got to get a balance. We're going to slice these out first. So we just peel the bananas. See all that stuff? Almost like a banana that you, want, you won't want to eat anymore. But this is uh, perfect for making a banana cake. So we're just going to cut this into half and then a very, very thin slice. We want 150 grams of bananas and then these two, I'm going to put it in the freezer to allow it to firm up. So what we want to do with these bananas, put some sugar on them and freeze them. So that's easier for you to handle later on. Sprinkle some sugar. The sugar is going to help with the caramelization because this cake batter is very, very soft. You won't be able to put the banana on top right after you, uh, you make the cake. You have to put the banana onto the cake in the middle of the baking. Okay, so that's the trick. Or else the banana will sink to the bottom. So what we want to add to the banana is a little bit of Salt, this is uh, just half a teaspoon of salt. A bit of sodium bicarbonate of baking soda. And we've got some banana essence. Okay, so you've got all that. And what we want to do is just mash the bananas. We're going to make this cake using the reverse creaming method. So the reverse creaming method just means that the flour and the butter goes in together first and not last. This is uh, just 150 grams of cake flour which we're going to sieve. One teaspoon of baking powder and we're just going to sieve this through. It's important for you to sieve the flour because you've got all those lumps there that you don't really want. So when you sieve the flour, you also aerate it. You just want to give it a few stirs to make sure that the baking powder and the flour is well distributed and mixed. This is the custard sugar. I've tried it all and I think this is the best way of putting it together and that's why I'm sharing this uh, everything with you, right? I think this is the best method. We want the butter to be a bit soft like this. This is just nice. Alright, so if you want to be more precise, about 17 degrees. 
What we're gonna do is we're gonna mix the butter and the uh, and the flour together. The butter will protect the flour from developing gluten. So I'm gonna whip up the eggs, right? So I'm gonna separate the whites and the yolk first. Now we're gonna whip up the whites first. Now you can actually whip up whole eggs, right? But if you're gonna whip up whole eggs, it's gonna take you a lot longer. Okay, and it's quite stiff already. Now we add in all the yolks. At this point, we put in the condensed milk. Once it's all nice and creamy like this, we put in the bananas. That's done. Time to just mix the butter and the flour together. Let's start at low speed. And what we want to do here, we just want to coat all the flour with butter. And then you're not worried that it's going to get tough. The butter is going to prevent the flour from contacting the water. We're going to now add butter and flour, one third at a time. Once it's all mixed, you can add in a little bit more of the egg butter. You notice I'm using a hand mixer to do this. You can of course do a make this cake with the stand mixer for this particular cake the hand mixer comes in really handy it goes nine speed so as you can see the eggs whipped up really quickly so i'm going to put the rest so once you see the mixture is a nice emulsion like this okay it's a quite a smooth batter already you can remove everything spray with a little bit of oil this is already a non-stick pan right even the pan is important so i always use a 9 by uh, 4 inch pan so at this stage what you want to do is to give it a few taps using your spatula just smoothen the top a little bit and there you go your cake is ready to go into the oven i'm using the KitchenAid countertop digital oven now this oven bakes this cake very well at 170 degrees for 50 minutes this is already preheated and so the cake goes in there and we're going to set it for 15 minutes but remember at the 25 minute mark once you see that the top is uh, already uh, form a layer and it's starting to brown that's when we put in the bananas okay so we are at the 25 minute mark and so this is where we put in the uh, the banana on top this is entirely optional all right so by this time you can see that the top is already brown and it's got a layer already so i'm gonna put this one here Uh, close it. All right, so now we are at the home stretch. The next 25 minutes, you'll bake. The top will be nice and golden, and we'll have ourselves a beautiful banana cake. All right, so this is a cake that I baked earlier on, uh, and it's all nice and cool, so you can cut into it and look at the structure. But before that, I gotta tell you, uh, even the position of the banana is important. Yeah. You look at how that crack line goes along this little curve here. That's on purpose. Let's cut in. Okay, so you can see. Ooh, look at that. That nice banana aroma. And then when you dip into it, soft and yet still quite crumbly. And let me share with you a secret. Actually, your banana cake, right? After you cool down, you put it in a toaster for about five minutes just to crisp up all these edges. Wow, even better. Even more shock. Banana cake. So I hope you enjoyed the recipe. Do write in and let me know how your cake went. Until next time, happy baking. Banana. -na -na.